This channel is for educational purposes only. Uh, make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investments. Um, and there is inherent risk in trading. So it's speculative. Uh, just make sure you keep that in mind. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. We've compiled some of the more important things that we have talked about in ADX over the course of the last year and taken some of the key parts out of certain videos that we've done and put them in an order that we thought would be a really good teaching tool. So if you sit back and watch these, uh, watch this video, it's going to go through and sort of start with the basics, teach you what the three lines mean, uh, explain when the in indicator is actually the most useful. And then we start to go into the strategies. And uh, number one being, you know, we, how to uh, how to use ADX to identify the strongest candidates to trade. And then after you've done that, showing you how to use ADX in multiple time frames during the pullback phase and uh, giving a few examples on that. And then also, I think, giving a really good example of how to use momentum divergence to identify trading opportunities. If you like to look for reversal patterns, uh, this is a really good component that I think, uh, and, and I show in this specific, particular video, I show how it, um, it can be used in, as a part of the bigger picture in, in, in terms of uh, multiple timeframes. And then finally, I, I think it's just important to, to finish up with understanding how to screen for uh, ADX, but also knowing when to use ADX to trend trade and when not to. So um, I hope you enjoy this. My suggestion would be to go get a, a, a burger or a pizza or something like that and take a notepad and sit back and relax and let me take you through the key ingredients of ADX, this very, very, very important indicator. All right. Enjoy. Uh, I wanted to spend a few minutes just, just going back to the basics on ADX because I think there, uh, you know, from what I have seen of videos on, posted online with respect to ADX, it, they just don't, to me, they're just wrong. I, I, I've seen some uh, that are fine and others that really uh, I think are missing the whole boat. So I think it's very important that you have a, at least a, a basic concept of what you're looking at with this indicator. It can be really complicated. Um, I'm going to try and take it down to the basics and give you, a, a, I think, a clearer understanding of what you're looking at uh, before you even consider using it. Um, it is a, a strength, an indicator that describes the strength of a trend, uh, but it, it is a little more complicated than that. So. Uh, first thing I want to show you here is this this blue line is my ADX and is the ADX line. Um, I use the, the uh, settings, the standard settings for ADX out there that Wells Wilder started with were 14, 14, meaning the DI lines would be your 13 and your ADX. Uh, I'm sorry, a, your DI lines would be 14 and your ADX would be 14. Um, I use a slightly, I've adopted a slightly different approach. I like to see faster peaks and valleys. So um, I actually adopt a, a methodology that was written by uh, Charles Schapp, uh, ADX, AD Excellence. Um, and, and these uh, settings are 13 for the DI lines and the ADX line is at eight. Um, I think it's just real important to understand. I don't know that the settings are as important as understanding what you're looking at. The green line shows the green line, which is the plus DI, is showing you the strength of the buyers. And the red line is, is the negative DI, and that is showing you the strength of the sellers. The blue line is simply the difference between red and green or green and red. It really doesn't care whether red is on top and strong or green is on top and strong. As long as there's separate, if there's a growing separation between the two lines, this blue line is going to go up. So let me just look at an example and I think this will make much more sense to you. Um, I'm just gonna point out this one period here where the market, where this is Microsoft on a weekly chart, you've got a pretty strong decline taking place. Um, you know, pretty, pretty good selling. The 18 drops down below the 40 and it's clearly making lower highs and lower lows. Um, during this period, the red DI 
which is showing you the strength of the sellers on the declines is rising. It's making higher highs, higher lows. And, and it actually, more so than anything, it's separating away from the green line. And it is on top, meaning red is in control or the sellers are in control right now. When red is on top and green is down here low, that means the sellers are in control of this trend. And if you notice, ADX is rising during this period. You're getting a violent decline to the downside and ADX is rising. That is based on the fact that the sellers are in control. Now, look at this. It makes a V bottom in early 2009 and takes off to the upside. And notice what happens. So let's just point this out. Now the stock is going straight up and look at what takes place. Green starts to make higher highs and higher lows and move up and ADX is moving up as well. So I, I mentioned this in my book. There's a, there's a small chapter in there and it says ADX is non-directional. It does not care what direction the market is going. If the market is going down in a very strong fashion, it has a lot of power to the downside, the ADX will go up. If the market or if, or if a stock is moving up strongly to the upside and it's showing a lot of power, then the ADX line is going to go up. It doesn't care whether the market's going up or down. So um, some of the videos that I had seen online were saying if you, if you've got to move from below 20 to above 20 or from below 25 to above 25, that would consi be considered a buy signal. That's just false. It is not based on, it, it is totally based on the direction. You have to look at the price action. You have to look at the DI lines to really determine whether you're in an uptrend or a downtrend and whether the strength in the ADI is show, sh telling you that the strength is to the upside or the downside. I think this is a pretty critical uh, factor uh, when you're looking at this. So um, I am obviously, I have drawn a gray, uh, like a sort of like a black line here going across at 25. And I truly believe that ADX, when ADX is above 25, you have a pretty strong trend in place. And it's strong enough for you to take uh, the type of trades that I would consider to be breakout trades and or um, pullback trades. Um, it, it is telling that you're strong enough to trend, essentially. The um, periods where you're below 25 and down and oscillating underneath, uh, you're in a pretty weak trend. And you need to be very careful during these periods because you can get chopped up. It's just not enough strength in the trend to give you, uh, to really warrant uh, playing uh, trending moves. So uh, the main point of this video, I just wanted to point out that this is, that ADX is non-directional, meaning it doesn't care what direction the, the stock is moving. If it's strong, the ADX will be rising. And if the trend is weak, uh, the ADX is going to drop. So it's all based on the difference between the two DI lines. So you have to know which line is on top and how aggressively, how aggressive the movement is. The only other point I want to make about ADX that I think is a critical factor, um, I give a lot of examples in other videos of how I specifically use this, looking for low ADX periods and then a breakout or strong ADX periods and then you're looking for a pullback in the trend. I have a number of examples that I uh, will be posting um, and several that are in my book and some videos that I'm going also going to be posting as well that'll, that'll show you how I use it. But if you don't understand this concept to start, you're going to be lost. And I think if you can just give a, a get a clear uh, look at what you're, um, at, you know, several examples of different stocks and make sure you understand what you're seeing, I think that'll help a lot. The other factor that I think is, is very important is this will be a lagging indicator when there's a lot of volatility in the price trend. If, if you have really huge swings and, and massive bars and big movement, you're, you, the ADX line is going to be a lagging indicator, meaning by the time you get in based on an ADX signal, it'll be very, very late. So you just need to be careful. I think those are the two main things to understand on a basic level about ADX before you even get into the signals that it gives. Make sure you understand DI lines contribute to the direction because it's whoever's on top and how far apart they are 
is determining the slope of the of the ADX line. And secondly, the volatility uh, of the price action is going to determine how much of a lag there's going to be to the ADX. So just a few simple things I thought it was very important for you to understand because you can get yourself in serious trouble trying to buy simply because ADX is crossing above 25. Wanted to do something a little different this time. Most of the videos that I've been doing have been related more towards uh, showing how to use multiple time frames to uh, both improve your timing and reduce your risk. Um, I, you know, I, th I think that's a very important part of using multiple time frames. The other side of it is stock selection. And I think if you get better at picking the right stocks to trade and to invest in, your chances of success are going to skyrocket whether your timing is good or not. Um, you know, you, you want to have good timing. Obviously, you don't want to buy something and then have a drop against you right away because you don't know the right time to enter. And a lot of the videos I'm doing are focused on that. But if we can spend a little time focusing on and maybe showing you a criteria to look for uh, that can really help you pick the, the right small circle of stocks to, to at least be your starting point. If there's thousands and thousands of stocks out there to choose from, if we can narrow the field down to, say, a select few of, say, five stocks, 10 stocks, something like that, that are really meeting some very strict criteria, again, I think your chances of success are going to uh, go way up. So um, in future videos, I am going to spend more time explaining on how to screen and look for this type of thing uh, from a screening capability. And down the road, uh, my website, Invest Like a Pro, in, in addition to that, we are going to have some uh, availability of an app that will help you with, uh, you know, a, a, a low cost way to be able to find screening, uh, screen stocks and look for names. But um, first thing I just want to explain is, um, again, I'm using multiple time frames and I've got um, Microsoft up here on the left side is a monthly chart and on the right side is a weekly chart. Um, this is actually the last, this, this chart on the right, this weekly chart is the exact chart I used um, for my book, Invest Like a Pro. It's, the, it's in the conclusion. Um, I, brought, I, I thought it was important to use a stock like this uh, as my example uh, to end the book. And there was a reason for that. I didn't go into all the details why. It was meeting the criteria for the two time frame uh, counter trend, uh, you know, lower time frame counter trend to the higher time frame and gave a really nice signal. But I'm gonna bring up a few more things here as to the reason why. And then I'm gonna give you several examples of what's going on here recently, um, actually in the same area, in the software area, where we've noticed a lot of the same pattern develop. So let's get right into it real quickly. On the left side, again, it's always starting with the higher time frame. And if you notice, I've drawn the arrows in um, both on the uh, right where price is pulling back to the 18 month line in, in Microsoft back in 2019, and also where the ADX is situated. Um, the most important thing to look for in terms from a starting standpoint, if you're looking at two time frames, this can be done in, in any two time frames you want to do. I'm doing it from a longer term perspective because I want you to understand that you don't have to necessarily be a short term trader to make a lot of money. There, there are ways to do this and use technical analysis from a longer term standpoint that can be very, very powerful. Um, so if I look at this pullback on the monthly chart, it's pulling back to the 18. And if you notice, the ADX line reached a peak of around 75, something like that up in here. That's a very, very big reading. What I've said in the past is anything over 25 means that you've got a pretty strong trend in place. Once you get over 50, you're in a really powerful trend. And anything up at like 75, you're almost sort of thinking it's it's probably too far along or maybe too strong and that it needs to pull back some. In a case like this, it actually did pull back. But if you notice, when it got back to the 18 month line, the ADX was still up in the 50s. It was like right around the mid 50s at that point. If if you go through a full fledged pullback to the 18 MA on whatever time frame you're on, and the ADX line can only drop down and it holds 25. Uh, I mean, anything above 25 is still a very strong trend, especially if the peak was over 50. 
So I'm looking for peaks over 50 and then troughs over 25. And if you can find that pattern on the higher time frame, you're going to want to go down to the lower time frame and look for, um, you know, what I would consider to be a very specific pattern. Um, I actually have a video on it. It's a uh, it's a MACD zero line reversal. And, you know, I'm just pointing out, I've drawn in a trend line here, same one I had in the book. Um, what I don't go into detail on in the book is just basically saying, look, I've got a pattern where I've gone through a correction on the lower time frame. in this case, the weekly chart. I know I'm in a powerful, powerful trend on the monthly based on the readings of the ADX, as I already described. If if the MACD line comes down to the zero and holds and starts to cup around, I am, and it doesn't really penetrate the zero line by any significant degree, I am inclined to want to draw a trend line in place. And when you break the trend line, I want to get long. If you wanted to be more aggressive, you could go down to a daily chart and look for a one, two, three change in trend. And you might be able to get this stock closer to 100 potentially, or probably more likely somewhere around 105 before it breaks the downtrend line. But if I'm just using two time frames, it becomes very clear if I've got a power trend or a very, very powerful trend on the on the higher time frame, I go down to the lower time frame. If I find a zero line to reversal and I see a trend line break, I'm gonna be very, very interested. So let me just, I'm gonna pull up a few more examples of this. Uh, so this is a uh, service now, NOW is a symbol. Notice how the ADX line here holds. And again, this is like in the 50s and you got a really good support from the 18 month. And then it did it again a, a little while later, but notice how the actually the ADX line is lower than it was back here. Now, a lot of people I think would look at this and say, hey, I've got divergence, okay? And I've told you, you need to be very, very careful about looking at divergence. And you're in a very, very powerful trend. Sometimes divergences show up when it's really not meaningful at all. And a lot of times that happens when the ADX line is still above 25. If you get signs of divergence, especially when the ADX line is up in the 40s or the 50s, you need to be very, very careful about doing any kind of counter trend trading. Do not fight the trend when the ADX is in a very strong, powerful level, like 40 or above. Once it gets down to say 30 or 25 or something like that, and you get a divergence, you can use that. If you notice the MACD line kept on hitting new highs with price, and it still is. Every single time price is hitting a new high, the uh, MACD line is hitting a new high. So I, I'm not getting the same kind of divergence reading off of uh, the MACD. And this is the reason why I do like to look at both at the same time. But the, mo the key thing I'm looking at is if ADX can hold above 25, and it can also hold uh, above the 18 month, I feel like I have a very good chance of uh, looking for a zero line reversal on the lower time frame. And again, I got two of them in NOW, this trend line break and this trend line break. In this case, because it was so severe to the downside, I would have probably waited for the trend line break, which is the one. I would have waited for the pullback and make a higher low and, and then either take out the high or probably done it on this higher pivot low uh, at where the arrow is pointing. But both really qualify as a zero line reversal. Uh, let me just quickly add a few more symbols in here so you can see same pattern, strong ADX holding the 18 month. And then we get a downtrend break, a test of the low. And when you turn back up through the 40 where I have the arrow, that is the confirmation of a, a, a MACD zero line reversal. Uh, let's just look at a few more. These are all software companies. This is more recently. Uh, actually, this was the beginning of 2019 as well. Uh, sideways consolidation still had the trend line break with the zero line here. Notice this one was, was also holding the monthly and it had really strong ADX, but look at how violent the decline was. And that caused a pretty serious overrun of the zero line. To me, when the blue line or the signal line crosses down below zero, you don't really have a, a zero line reversal anymore. Um, I can see the, the red line or the MACD line crossing down below a little bit, but if both lines cross down below, I would not consider that a zero line reversal anymore. Um, look at something like RNG. Uh, this was a while back, uh, again, actually around the same time frame as the Microsoft, but same pattern, strong ADX reading. 
uh, and a zero line reversal. And it, this is not just in uh, software companies. This is MasterCard. Visa had the same pattern. Strong, powerful reading here. You get the pullback to the 18 month. But if you notice, the uh, the uh, ADX line is still way up in the 50s, 40s. And then you get a zero line reversal here with a trend line break. Um, we can look at a few more examples. UNH, same thing back in 2016, the beginning of 2016 here. Um, and if I zero back here, you can see the trend line break. That was sort of the kickoff move with the zero line reversal. Um, if I want to look at something like Home Depot way back in 2014, same pattern. Uh, this was more of a horizontal trend line break, but it was a zero line reversal. So these are all the same pattern. It's their variations of the same pattern. I think it's very, very important to get a feel for it. Um, if I go back and I can do this on pretty much any one of these just to show that this pattern does develop in all time frames. This is a daily chart of Microsoft just over, say, over the last six months. And if you notice, this penetrated 25, but just a small amount. But when this came into the 18 at the beginning of December, the, the uh, ADX line was still above 25. So that really qualified. And if you went down to a lower time frame, you could have seen the zero line reversal pattern develop. Now, when you use a daily and an hourly, because the hourly is a one to six and a half and not a one to five ratio um, to the daily, you're going to get a little bit more of an overrun of the zero line. It won't be an exact right at the zero line reversal, but same concept holds. And then if you notice here, you had another version of this really strong, powerful ADX reading and you pulled back and it still held well above the 25 level. So this is just a few more examples. Um, I think it's important to understand that if you're going to look at stocks, you want to try and zero in on the best names, the, the best of the best. And this is one of the ways that I would do it. You can certainly do it by looking at one stock after the other, just browsing through and looking for these patterns. I'm going to show you in future videos the type of screening tools that you can use to uh, really kind of speed up the process so you don't have to go through thousands. Maybe you go through 100 or maybe 50 or something like that to pick out the best ones. So I wanted to... Uh, spend a little time and give another example of multiple time frame analysis um, on a long trade. I'm starting with a weekly chart of Starbucks. And um, I wanted to point out a few things, both on the higher time frame and then some of the things on the lower time frame. So uh, first of all, this is the higher time frame. In other words, uh, this is the time frame that where I am looking and I'm making a decision to uh, to make a trade. This is the trend time frame. This is the time frame that I'm going and saying, okay, I have I have a pattern that I really like, and I want to go uh, I want to go trade this. Um, so I'm looking at this pattern here, really late 2018, where you broke out of this base area, had really good momentum characteristics in terms of the price action, making a nice move. I've got the ADX down here. This shows where, um, and I've in other videos and, and in my book, I describe ADX and how I'm looking at this. But one of the important things is as this moves up and then starts to pull back towards its 18 MA on the weekly chart, notice how the ADX line holds above the 25. This is the gray line going across here. That holds above 25 throughout this entire correction on this pullback. You don't have to have that, but the ones that that do that tend to be the strongest trends. If if you show good strength to the upside and you go through a full correction and and the correction doesn't cause the ADX to drop down under 25, uh, this is a pretty powerful trend. So I really like to look for that on these type of patterns. So you got a really nice breakout. It did bleed back through the high of 2017. So a lot of people look at this and say, hey, this broke out and then it failed because it didn't hold above this peak. I don't have a problem with it bleeding back a little bit, especially if it's working its way back towards the 18 month moving average, uh, 18 week moving average. In addition to that, it's showing really good momentum characteristics. So that that's that's the starting point for me. I'm looking at that and saying, OK, I see this pullback. Um, I want to now go down as this works its way down towards the 18 week. I am now going to go down towards the on the daily chart um, and see if if I can get um, a tighter entry, um, a more timely entry 
rather than just buying right on the 18 and not having a stop in place or, uh, you know, uh, waiting for this to turn up here and buying it up in this area um, and maybe the risk reward and having to put a stop way down here. Maybe there's a way on a lower time frame that I can get in with a little bit less risk and maybe a little bit more timely um, and certainly have a little bit more confidence uh, that the trend is turning back up. So um, I actually have already pulled this back. So this this pullback is this pullback here. This is the same. This is the same time frame. This these lower highs and lower lows on this time frame are the simple pullback on the weekly chart. So um, a few things I wanted to point out. Uh, if I look at, um, I'm just going to pull up the ADX and I, I want to show you the other side of ADX. So on one side, on the higher time frame, I like to look for a lot of strength. I want to see a powerful move and on a pullback, I like to see it hold. And then on the, on the other side of the equation, when you're going through a correction, I actually want to see it to be very weak relative to the peak. So here's the strength of the up move this big, huge move to the upside. And then as price is pulling back, I'm trying to gauge how strong is the decline? Is this a really violent and powerful decline? Or is it not as strong as the stock was when it was going up? And if I look at ADX, I can see a really powerful move based on the green, which is based on the buyers. And then on the decline, I can see red is taking over, but it's nowhere near as strong as as green was. So this is this gives me a lot of confidence that I can go and look for some trigger mechanisms uh, on this time frame because my bias is to the upside based on the fact that this this ADX is saying this just isn't that strong. This decline just isn't that strong. So I want to go back and look at MACD. Um, so what we're looking for, and this is straight out of my book, we, we're looking for a pattern where you get the opposing trend, right? So your trend to the upside is this way. This is the trend you want to play. You want to play the trend going up. The 18 is above the 40 and both lines are rising. And, you know, pretty strong trend, obviously based on ADX, but also you can see uh, based on the moving averages. But you're, when you're at this point, you might not know that yet. So I'm looking at this and saying, OK, I know I have an uptrend in place. I am now looking for a opposing trend, which would be when the 18 is below the 40 and um, we're we're working our way down and price moves in the zone and then comes out of the zone. As I've su suggested in other videos, this is kind of important. Now, what I what I want you to look for here is once it goes in the zone and comes out, does it go to a new low and does it keep trending to the downside? In this case, it doesn't. All it does is really have a down day or two, makes a higher low. And then as this starts turning back around and getting back above the 18, I'm start I'm going to start getting very, very interested in especially knowing the strength of this time frame. I, I am definitely going to be more on the aggressive side as this comes up through 64, maybe takes out this area of four to five bars to the upside. And then I'm also going to see where the MACD is crossing over, which is right in this same range. So I might not necessarily wait for a break of the 40 in this situation because I know I've got to move in the zone and a move out of the zone and it had no follow through whatsoever. This just couldn't go to a new. I mean, if this would have dropped down to 60 even, it would have probably given me pause when it came back up. I might not have wanted to just jump right back in. Um, and I, I think what uh, what I'd be looking for is this pattern where you you go in the zone and instead of going to new lows, um, you fail. You you go to you go down, you make a higher low and then this fail. It's a sell signal that fails, which is right out of my book. And as this turns up and MACD is giving you a slight edge here to get in, maybe before the break of the 40, you can get in on this trend at a pretty good level because it's very late in this correction. You didn't have to buy on the first week down or the second week or the third week. You're basically getting in um, right as this new year, right around 2019 is starting to kick in. It's it's telling you, you know, it's it's pretty, pretty timely. So um, and then you get the benefit of immediate follow through. I mean, you had to deal with a little bit of uh, volatility at the start of the trend. But that's why I don't like putting stops too tight. 
Um, I would probably be back below this last bottom or below this bottom here to give it a little bit more breathing room. I don't necessarily want to use the moving average. I've mentioned this in other videos. You can get kind of just nicked out using the moving averages sometimes. I like to go back and look for the last price point and uh, that'll usually be my backstop for a, for a stop point. Um, so this kind of puts it all together. You've got the the highs, the, the upper uh, time frame, the higher time frame, breaking out of a base, pulling back to support, showing good momentum characteristics. You've got the pullback on the lower time frame, showing weak momentum characteristics. And then you get a pretty timely and helpful uh, additional trigger from your MACD as price is giving you um, uh, also a very important uh, buy signal. So um, these are the types of combinations we want to continue to look for and take advantage of as time goes on. Hi, this is Joe. We're going to talk about a trade I did in Wells Fargo. And it's a swing trade, but as I've mentioned in several videos going back for the last few months, uh, our tendency, my partner and I's tendency has been to focus for swing trades. We've, we've liked to use uh, options uh, instead of trying to do the stock. And I'm going to explain in a little bit more detail as I move on. But the, the fact of the matter is you can control risk using the options in a much greater way. You don't have to deal with the overnight gaps and stuff. So you can determine how much you want to lose in a trade and then risk that in the option. And so uh, it, it, sometimes when you put a stock trade on with a stop, you don't get filled at the stop price. There's a lot of slippage. And if there's gaps, it could be a lot worse than that. So that's our reasoning. Uh, I'm going to get into the trade and show you all the reasons why. Uh, one of the main reasons has to do with ADX. So uh, let's go into that right now. Uh, so I've got the chart of Wells Fargo and I've got the four time frames up. And, uh, you know, the first thing, looking at the monthly chart, notice how far away we moved away from the 18 month moving average. You see the distance from the breakdown level, which, you know, essentially, uh, you know, is up around 44, 45. Uh, and the 18 month is up at 44 as well. So you have a lot of distance there. That's the starting point. Then if you go and look at the weekly chart, and let's just zero in on this a little bit. Uh, notice how when the stock came down, it made a push higher and then it made a, a lower low. So you've got a, a fierce move to the downside, a rally up, and then a, a lower low takes place. And I'm always trying to compare the momentum of this decline to this decline. So I'm always looking at that from the standpoint that does it look like the stock is gaining momentum or losing momentum? And I could just eyeball it without looking at any kind of momentum indicators now. I've been doing this long enough that I, I can see the pattern that it just looked to me like it's losing downside momentum. So one of the things you can look at when you if you use uh, ADX um, is the DI lines and the top DI line. So red is, is in control here. That means the sellers are in control. And if you notice, you made a peak, uh, a on this decline, you made a peak in the red. The sellers made a strong peak. And then we had a rally up and that caused a decline in the sellers or the, a decline in the red line or the DI line. And then when we made a new low in price, the sellers could not match the low that was, or the peak that was made here. So in this instance, there's a divergence in the red DI and actually green did the same thing. If you notice, uh, I kind of like to look at it like a contracting formation where you're making lower, the, the upper DI is making a lower high and the lower DI is making a higher low and they're kind of coming together. And once I see that, I think the odds are pretty high that we're going to form some kind of a consolidation pattern, some kind of a retracement, uh, a reversion to the mean type of a pattern. So at this point, uh, you know, you start looking at this trade, we started looking at it, and we noticed there was a pretty good distance up to the 18 week moving average. That is the target for a counter trend trade in this instance. So um, you could look at the prior peak. Uh, let's just point this out. You know, the prior peak could be a target, but I like to use the moving average and make sure that I have room enough to the moving average for the trade to make sense. Uh, we're going to go down to a daily chart now, 
And you can see the divergence is a little bit more blatant when you look at it with the, the MACD and with the ADX. So uh, let's start with MACD. And you can see that you've got a, a lower low in price, pretty significant, and you're making a significantly higher low in MACD. We've talked about this. Go back through any old uh, momentum divergences uh, videos that I've done. Uh, I mean, this should be pretty, you should pretty much understand this by now uh, if you didn't before you even watch my videos. So now let's look at ADX. You got a divergent, you got a, a new low taking place in price again, but notice the divergence in the ADX. This is what really piqued my interest in this stock in that when the stock went to a new low, the peak in the ADX, which is the blue line, could only make it to 25. And when you have a really powerful trend, look at how powerful of a decline you're in. And you're gonna make a peak here, which was you know somewhere about 45, something like that. And then you make a peak here, which was over 60. And if you can continue to make peaks over 25, then the trend is probably strong enough to keep, keep declining. But the moment you make a peak in the red DI or the uh, off of their sellers and the, and the blue line can only make it up to 25, now you start looking for a reversal. So there's a big difference between MACD divergence for me and this ADX type, this type of divergence at ADX where you make a peak at 25 or lower. It tells me that uh, you should be on the lookout for a reversal and not just a reversion to the mean. So. A MACD uh, divergence normally just tells me, okay, just look for a reversion to the mean. Look for a, a move back, you know, back towards any type of uh, price resistance. But when I see ADX doing this, I'm on the lookout for something much more meaningful. And I might play it more conservatively, but I'm still looking for some type of a pattern that, uh, you know, gives me enough room to, that I, or I at least think is going to have enough room to make a three or four to one. Uh, on a MACD type divergence, I might only look for two to one and just get in really in and out really quickly. But on a, a ADX divergence like this, I might play for a much bigger uh, uh, upside move. So um, let's just zero in a little bit more on the, uh, on the daily pattern because I want to show one other point here. I want to combine different things because I'm always on the lookout for uh, confluence on all the types of patterns that I use. And one of the things that I notice is um, when you broke below this low, you didn't stay down down there for very long. And and then you had a rally up and you made a higher low. So let's just zero in a little bit more. So. This higher bottom, I believe, looks a lot like the pattern that I showed, which was the spike and ledge pattern, uh, or I'm sorry, an undercut, and it's actually an undercut and rally pattern. So you broke below these lows. Go back through that video I, I did not that long ago, all called undercut and rally, and it's and this pattern is very, very similar. You broke through and made a higher bottom. The difference is I tend to look for uh, the higher time frame to be in an uptrend when this is in place. But if I have momentum divergence, I'm still considering this to be very, very interesting. So I've got this pattern. And also, if you notice, uh, if I go back to MACD, uh, you did hold on a divergent play, but then you also came down and made a little higher low. When you made the higher low, you had a little pinch play develop. So it's the combination of three or four different patterns that we use. If I go down to the hourly chart, uh, I want to point something out that I think is actually pretty important. Our entry was really not all that great. I mean, we saw this uh, on this day here, uh, really kind of right near the end of the day, and we, we, we missed our entry. We would have probably done it uh, even if before the breakout because of what was taking place on the daily chart. Uh, but we were pretty confident that based on what the ADX was doing, there was going to be more potential upside. So we were willing to do this right in the open. And what we did was we actually did the uh, options and we did ones that were about, uh, you know, three weeks out. And we did the ones they cost us about 49. I think it was 49 cents. And. Uh, you know, the idea behind this was to say, you know, we'll buy the option, know that whatever amount of money you want to risk in a trade, 
you put that amount of money in the option. And that's exactly what we did. And then we actually put an order to sell at uh, $2 because that would have been uh, basically a three to one uh, risk reward. What ended up happening is because of this huge gap, we got filled at 278. So inside of a couple of days, we were basically in this for two, two and a half days. Uh, we bought them at 49 cents, sold them at $2 and 78 cents. And it's the type of thing where once you put the trade on, you're not, there's no anguish. You're not watching. You're just letting the trade play out and you're looking for some upside to, to kick in. Um, obviously, this is a great, this is a great situation where it plays out so quickly. I mean, we bought more time. We had more than three weeks in our options. So we weren't convinced that it was going to happen right away. But in this instance, the whole sector uh, in the financial area really made a, a pretty strong move. And, uh, you know, that was also part of the uh, reasoning for, for why we wanted to do it. But at the same time, I just thought this was a real good example of how you can take all the kind of patterns that I've been mentioning, or at least several of them, and put them together for uh, a pretty good trade. We're going to talk about ADX today. I uh, want to make sure I give a, a better explanation or maybe a more detailed explanation of why the 25 line to me is so important. And, you know, making sure you know when you're investing in a stock where it is in relation to the 20, the, where the ADX is in relation to the 25 line. And there is a specific situation where you can buy before ADX is above 25. And I want to make sure I explain that as well. Uh, but for the most part, we're looking for pullbacks when ADX is above 25. But let me just show I'm going to give you two or three examples as to why I think it's a valuable tool, confirming tool, and a great screening tool. Uh, let's go straight into this first example, which is uh, which is the Apple Daily chart. And you know what I wanted to show here is uh, this period here where ADX finally crosses this 25 line is this dark line going across. And what I've said in prior videos is that I'm, I'm always looking to make sure that the ADX crosses above 25. And I actually prefer to see it at, say, around 30 or higher uh, at every peak. When stock is making a new high, I want to see uh, ADX confirmed by making a peak of, of approximately 30 before starting to pull back. Um, there are times when you get into a really strong trending move where the ADX will stay above 25 uh, throughout the entire run. And so I, what I wanted to just point out is I'm, I'm drawing a, a, a vertical line at this spot, which is where, again, where the 25, where price is crossing above 25. And from that point on, we have confirmation on an ADX basis that we're in a strong trend. Um, one of the things that I mentioned over and over again in prior videos is if the 18 is above the 40 and both lines are rising, uh, you're getting that confirmation that you're in a solid trend. And so if you notice, uh, that is right about the same spot where the 40 starts to rise right about there. And that is really where we're getting confirmation on an ADX basis. So if, if I wanted to do a screen and say, find me all the stocks that are in a strong trend, you could go and say, give me ADX. And I, again, I use the 13.8 uh, version. The DI lines are at 13 and the smoothing is eight. And if you use a 25 line for that specific uh, method of ADX, uh, canceled. when you cross above 25, you're, you're pretty much getting confirmation that you have a good moving average environment. You're getting that confirmation that the trend is strong. And it's much easier to screen and look for stocks where the ADX is above 25 than it is to try and find, you know, uh, 18 above the 40 and both lines rising, the slope and all that. It's really hard to screen for that. And so one of the things I really like to do is go and screen for ADX. And I do screen for low ADX patterns, but one of the things that I think is important is to go find all the stocks that are in a strong trend, and that's where the ADX is above 25. If you want to use 30, that's fine too. The reason why I use 25 is that I don't want to really miss anything. And a lot of times after a big move, you'll come down to the 25 line and hold, just like this did here in July. And so as long as this 
blue line, this ADX line is above 25, you're in a strong trending environment where you can play trend trades. And that means you can go buy pullbacks uh, on this time frame and go down to a lower time frame and play like an opposing trend trigger or something like that. Um, once you get below 25, and I would argue once you've made a big move like this, once red starts to take over dominance, which is right about here, um, then you have to stop doing trend trading activities, meaning you don't look for pullbacks anymore on this time frame. You don't, you don't want to go down to the hourly and look for a pullback trade because now you're, you've reached a point, especially right here where the ADX drops underneath 25, You've reached a point where we're no longer in the strong trending mode. Uh, instead, we're in this sideways consolidation. And so what needs to take place after that is you need to go through enough of a sideways pattern that you develop actually some sort of a pattern, either a triangle pattern, either a rectangular pattern or a, a ascending triangle, something along those lines that you can draw trend lines on price. And the minimum amount of bars you really need going sideways, I would say is 20, but I'd prefer to have 25 or 30 in this consolidation phase where you're drawing in uh, trend lines. If we go to the next, next example, Amazon, it's more glaring because, again, here's where price is getting back above uh, and getting things going. The 18 is above the 40. And if you notice here, the 18 and the 40 aren't as parallel, but we've got a really strong trend based on ADX where it crosses right at this level right here. And it stays basically, it does bleed back below 25 a little bit, but green DI stays well above uh, red DI throughout this whole period until you get to this point right here. And uh, so, you know, if you look at uh, where ADX actually crossed back below 25, now all of a sudden, if you notice, again, we're into this sideways period. And one of the major things I wanted to make sure I explained is that this is where traders lose money. When ADX crosses the back down below 25, so you have this whole period where you've been trending to the upside, and every pullback was really an opportunity to try and trade. And then once you reach this point where you cross back down below and, and ADX gets back below 25, now you're in this mode that I would consider to be kind of like a chopping block where you know price is more choppy and sideways and you don't really have a, a trend in place, and instead you're just moving back and forth sideways without any real momentum. And so, again, what you need to do in this situation is draw your trend lines in. And so I would draw this trend line like this, uh, and you, know, you have a trend line down here. And so I've got this trend line in place, and until price breaks out of this range, with this low ADX pattern, I'm really not interested. And if you try and play this for a trending trade, you're gonna get chopped up. If you, if you think you're gonna anticipate a breakout before it breaks out of this range, uh, your, your odds of making money are pretty small. Now you could change your methodology and say, okay, now counsel. I know I've got low ADX, I can maybe sell into resistance, say be a seller against resistance or a buyer against support if I want. My personal preference is not to play this game. It's too hard, it's too much, it takes too much time. Uh, the skill level has to be pretty good. I'm not saying not to do it, but you gotta have pretty good skill level. Um, I would rather just go find another stock that's in this mode, that's got strong ADX and has a trend and, and I can look for pullbacks. And so by using this ADX screen, looking for ADX above 25, you can go find the stocks in this specific time frame that is in trending mode. And then again, you can go down to the lower time frame for your entries and exits. Let's do one more as an example. And if you notice, uh, this is Boeing. And what's taken place really since June, look at how quiet this sideways period has been and look at how low the ADX band has been for so, so long. And so once you get a period, like I said, once you reach a period where, let's say you've gotten above 25 bars, in this case it would be 25 days, 25 trading days, or even 30 trading days, you draw your trend lines on price and you wait for a sign that you're getting ready to come out of this consolidation. 
Now, once you keep consolidating like this, if you want to change the trend line to this, you're absolutely uh, welcome to do that. As long as you have a well-defined uh, trend and, and something that you can put in place that makes sense, you can put your trend line in. Either way, this gap up would have really told you that things are shifting. And this is really the only time that I'm willing to buy uh, when ADX is still below 25. And that's when I have a well-defined trend line and I have ADX has been below for a long period of time. And then I get a dynamic move through the trend line. If it just comes up, uh, just to show, I mean, if you get a little tiny little poke through like that and it doesn't even close above it or it just barely gets through and there's not much volume or price expansion or anything like that, yeah, I'm not I'm not as interested. I want to see more confirming action like what we saw with the gap up. Once you get a strong close through because you got to realize what's happening is you're trying to come out of a low ADX condition where you're going to get some false moves, maybe some attempts to break out. And so you want to see the price volume action confirm that you're really getting out of this zone. Clearly that's what happened here and then you actually got uh, a little pinch play, a two bar pullback. You could have been a buyer on this bar right here as it took out this prior bar. Um, ADX uh, DI was confirming with the break above, green breaking above red, and then you got the pivot high above 30. Uh, so very nice confirmation on that pullback. And so um, I just wanted to make sure you understand to avoid the chopping block, you don't want to get involved when ADX is below 25 and all you're doing is chopping back and forth. And the way to do that is draw trend lines on price. And when ADX gets under 25, you draw trend lines on price and you don't do anything until you break out of that range. I um, hope this was helpful. Please hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll talk to you soon.